Lightning plus volcanic ash creates glass, according to the Geological Society of America. It's not a new article, this is from 2015. In their open access paper for geology, Kimberly Gennaro and colleagues proposed for the first time a mechanism for the generation of glass spherules in geologic deposits through the occurrence of volcanic lightning. And this happens quite often. We do get lightning over volcanic, volcanic eruptions in the ash cloud. The existence of fulgurites, which are glassy products formed in rocks and sediments struck by cloud to ground lightning, provide direct evidence that geologic material can be melted due to natural lightning occurrences. Lightning induced volcanic spherules, or LIVS for short, form in the atmosphere from the physical transformation of the volcanic ash particles into spherules of, ga of glass due to the high heat generated by the lightning discharge. It turns to glass. Examples of these textures were discovered in deposits from two volcanic eruptions where lightning was extensively documented. One was over the eruption of the Alaska volcano of Mount Redoubt, March 23, 2009, and the April to May 2010 eruption of the Iceland volcano Ejjaljökull. In some cases, the individual spherules are smooth and clear, while in other instances the surfaces are interrupted by holes or cracks or uh, things that look like uh, mud or uh, jelly. Cracks that appear to result from outward expansion of the spherules interior. Analogy, uh, analog laboratory experiments examine the flash over mechanism across the high voltage insulators contaminated by volcanic ash and they confirm that glass spherules can be formed from the high heat generated by these electrical discharges. So these glass spheres are forged by volcanic lightning and they offer clues about the eruption. Studying volcanic eruptions in person can be dangerous and scientists have uh, tried that and uh, it was to their demise. Volcanic lightning. Volcanic volcanoes, yes, they do make lightning as we see and by contrast offers a safe opportunity to examine what happens inside a volcano. These bright lightning bolts still occur in vicious environments plus the thick dense plumes of the ash can obscure the lightning strikes as well. And scientists now have developed a way to analyze volcanic lightning that is cost effective. Uh, this is an article written two years ago by PBS. I'll leave a link below for you for this. Relatively safe and simple way. Rather than get near volcanic lightning in order to test what's happening or use expensive equipment, researchers at the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich in Germany gain clues through a byproduct of the lightning, which is, of course, the glass. Volcanic lightning occurs during an eruption. When hot ash particles rise into the air, they rub against each other. The heat and the friction create a differential in electric charge, and that's how the lightning spark is struck. The lightning zaps in and out of the thick plumes of rising ash, making the ash so hot it sometimes turns to liquid. Can you imagine? It turns to liquid. And if the ash particles are heated sufficiently and given enough time to cool, they can morph into tiny glass spheres, no bigger than a dot from a pen tip. The glass particles then fall back to the ground and gather in large deposits. Quote, if the lightning event is so short that the particles won't melt in the first place, said Fabian Wadsworth of University of Munich, volcanologist who led the study, published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Solid Earth. He explains, but if the heat diffuses into the particle and melts it, then two things happen. With enough time, the melting ash will round into a complete sphere thanks to surface tension. Or if the particle cools at a faster rate, then the rounding and fi the final glass will remain 
jagged and angular. Fabian Wadsworth and his team use computer simulation to develop a mathematical model that can predict what eruption conditions were necessary to create the various glass spheres. The researchers' models allowed them to work backwards. By noting a glass particle shape, they can determine the specific lightning conditions of any given eruption. Volcanic lightning strikes vary in temperature and duration, so the result, the glass particles, differ as well. They say that the number of lightning events and how long they last seems to be somehow related to the distribution of sizes of particles in the plume. This is what Wadsworth explains. In turn, the distribution sizes of particles in the plume is rela related directly to how explosive the eruption was that produced them. So simulating the conditions under which these glass particles form provides a better understanding of how the volcano erupted. And volcan volcanic lightning gains steam. For a long time, it was anecdotal. So it's been interesting to watch that transition develop. This is what Stephen McNutt, volcanologist at University of South Florida, not involved in the study, explains. He says, now you get to see talks at scientific meetings about volcanoes, and they're starting to more routinely report lightning. In the past, scientists relied on instruments called lightning mapping arrays, LMAs, that detect radio frequencies to resolve the electrical signals from lightning strikes. LMAs, combined with other instruments, allow scientists to create a 3D map of volcanic lightning with an accuracy of within 10 meters, McNutt said. But this technique is expensive and still does not provide all the answers, such as the lightning temperature. Wadsworth and his team demonstrated that using the mathematical tools, researchers can backtrack from big-scale natural observations, lightning, to decipher details parts of the complicated eruption process. The seemingly small, inconsequential aftermath from the eruption of the glass particles are akin to a new diagnostic test in a doctor's office that can clear up portions of the bigger picture. And also, this work feeds directly into the hazard mit mitigation for volcanic eruptions. When volcanic ash mixes with rainfall, it creates sludge that can even collapse houses or, or house roofs or building roofs. The traveling ash cloud can cause respiratory problems, damage machinery, stymie renewable energy generation by blocking solar panels. Wadsworth and his team have begun to test if and how well ash particles melted by lightning stick to jet engine surfaces. Knowing this, is, uh, knowing this information could guide planes around erupting volcanoes. So the ability to quickly analyze plume conditions for less cost will help scientists to foresee potential dangers in the aftermath of a volcanic eruption. Wadsworth explains getting information quickly about the plume condition helps us predict, predict where plumes will go in certain wind conditions, which obviously helps us prepare for ash arriving in certain parts of the world. As we said, the lightning-induced volcanic spherules formed in the atmosphere from the physical transformation of volcanic ash particles into spheres of glass due to the high heat generated by lightning discharge. Examples of textures discovered in deposits lightning, where lightning was extensively documented. In some cases, the individual spherules are smooth. Other cases, the, the surfaces are interrupted by holes, cracks, and what appear to result from the outward expansion of the interior. The analog laboratory experiments examining flashover mechanisms across high voltage insulators contaminated by volcanic ash confirm that glass spherules can form from high heat generated by electric discharge. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight 
on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.